Good morning, everybody. I hope you have a bulletin with you, and uh, we're going to uh, work our way through that uh, in just a moment here. Welcome if you're with us for the first time today. Um, it's great to have you have you here and uh, worshiping with us, uh, whether you are here in this building or worshiping with us online uh, from wherever you may be. It's a holiday weekend, so uh, many of our many of our church family are away this weekend, and. Uh, uh, if they are going to end up watching this at some point today or through the week, we welcome you as well. Uh, if you are here for the first time or if you're joining us online for the first time, um, that QR code you see on the screen and that, e uh, that uh, web address, guelphsa.ca slash connect, is where you can uh, fill out a digital connect card and let us know uh, if you want us to follow up with you during the week. We'd be happy to do that. You can also use that to uh, provide us with prayer requests. I mean, we do have um, a dedicated uh, uh, prayer line, uh, guelphsa.ca slash prayer um, or prayer at guelphsa.ca if you want to email it to us. Uh, lots of different ways that you can connect, uh, but you can also use the connect card to do that as well. Well, in your bulletin, there are a number of inserts. Uh, you have your sermon notes insert in there. And uh, uh, next Sunday, let's talk about next Sunday, May the 28th. We have a special guest uh, joining us. We'll be bringing the Word of God next Sunday. Major Barb Stanley from our um, territorial headquarters will be here to lead our, our worship service uh, and bring the message. She will also be staying with us after the service. So following the service next Sunday, we have a potluck lunch. So uh, a, a congregational lunch after the service. We'd love to have you there. And the instruction on, uh, on what to bring for the potluck lunch are on the insert uh, in your bulletin. So if you have a last name that starts with the letters A to H, you're on deck for a main dish. 
If you have a last name that starts with the letters I to N, that's a side dish, and then the remaining letters are uh, a dessert. We'll provide refreshments, and uh, we'll have a great time of fellowship after the service. And uh, Major Stanley will be, uh, during our lunchtime, we'll be presenting a special um, conversation, really. It's not so much a presentation as it is a conversation, creating space for us as a congregation to be able to uh, have some dialogue about the impact uh, that the pandemic has had on us as individuals, but also as a faith community. And uh, I mean, that's some space that uh, maybe we have not sat in as a uh, as a community to be able to say, this is what the pandemic did. Uh, this is how I feel after the pandemic. You know, what, what are some of the challenges we see, some of the struggles that we have? And we're going we're gonna to create some space to have those dialogues together over lunch. So that's next Sunday, May the 28th. Um, and then, of course, we have our mowing and weeding volunteer um, solicitation. We have this many people signed up so far. So if you go out into the lobby and then into the hallway where all the coat hangers are, there's a little mail um, counter there, and there's a sign-up sheet. If you can uh, take a look at that, we'd love to uh, get some help over the summer months uh, with weeding our gardens. We want our property to look nice and mowing our lawns, and we will train you on our lawn tractor and all of that kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. I love getting out there on a nice sunny day and uh, put the headphones in and mow the lawns. It's a great way to, uh, uh, to support your church and uh, get some fresh air. That's always, that's always helpful. So uh, that sign-up sheet is out there at the mail counter in the back hallway. What else do we have? Uh, June the 4th, I want you to mark your calendars for Sunday, June the 4th. Um, Leanne and I are away. We've got some holidays coming up, so we're going to be away for uh, two Sundays, June the 4th and June the 11th. On June the 4th, we're having a special community care ministry Sunday. If you don't know what the, our community care ministries um, are and who they are and what they do in bringing the good news of Jesus Christ and bringing comfort and bringing a ministry of presence to people in our community, um, specifically seniors, people in hospitals, people in uh, nursing homes, retirement homes, um, come out on June the 4th. You're going to hear all about what the Community Care Ministries does. And uh, Major Shirley King from Divisional Headquarters, um, who is our Divisional Community Care Ministry Secretary, is going to be bringing the message that Sunday. But the members of our community care ministry team are leading that whole service. So you're going to want to come and support them as well, and you'll get to know all about the ministry that they have in the community, uh, and even ways that you might get involved in a ministry like uh, like our CCM ministry. So that's on Sunday, June the 4th. Then on June the 11th, we're grateful that, uh, that Majors Max and Doreen uh, are going to be leading that service for us uh, while we're away. Now, I do have a couple of pictures. These were last-minute additions to our announcements. And yesterday, uh, if you were here yesterday morning, we had an amazing morning at our Loft Children's Library. We had a Meet the Author event. Children's author Lauren Davidson was with us. She's at the, uh, at the big table there uh, meeting some of the folks who came. And there she is by the window um, reading some of her books. Uh, Lauren has written five children's books. And, uh, and she was with us yesterday reading to the families that were here, um, sold some of her books, and uh, we had a lot of games and activities in the gym, and we just had a great time. Oh, there's a couple of our uh, fun-loving friends, and, uh, and, then, um, and then the proceeds of all the sales from her books, 10% came back to support the Loft Children's Library, so we're really grateful for that, and it was a great opportunity for uh, Lauren to be here and to interact and to read her stories in front of a very engaged crowd. Uh, they asked her lots of questions about her books and her story writing, and, uh, and then we just had a great time hanging out, right? So there we go. There you go next. You like that? And uh, this is our dream team. Becky and, uh, and Nick. So we had, a, we had a blast and lots of activities. Some people uh, tried their hand at writing their own books uh, and doing their own illustrations and making bookmarks. So this was our first Meet the Author event. We will have more uh, in the future. And, uh, and it was just a, just a, great, uh, a great morning uh, that we could spend uh, supporting someone from our community and, uh, and just having a, having a great time. And of course, education and literacy are all really, really important. So it was great to make sure that when you hear about the next one that you you, uh, that you make time to come and be a part of that. No dates have been set yet, right, Leanne? I'm not aware of any date yet, but uh, we'll make sure that, that you all know about it in advance.
Uh, and then the only other announcement that I have um, is that uh, we have uh, a new addition to our church family. Uh, Victoria and Dallas Evans have, uh, their baby has arrived. Their baby arrived this past week and um, Kaylin Micah, I think I'm pronouncing it right. If not, I'll probably get text messages or emails afterwards, but uh, baby Kaylin Micah arrived and uh, all are doing well. And uh, so, I mean, if you're friends with those guys on, on Facebook, you'll have seen little pictures of the new, of the new baby and uh, we're really uh, delighted for that new gift of life. Well, our call to worship this morning uh, is two passages of scripture. One is from the scripture reading that we'll be focusing on a little bit later in the service, Acts chapter 4 verse 32, and I'll invite you to stand if you're able for our call to worship, and then we're going to uh, join our voices and sing. And Acts 4.32 says this, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. And then Psalm 133 says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It's as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. We gather as a community, we gather today to worship the God who, who loves us, the God we adore, and we offer our praises. We, de we declare blessing and honor glory and power be unto the ancient of days let's join our voices together as the uh, band helps us with that song uh, ancient of days Would you take a moment to greet each other this morning in the name of the Lord? Turn to your neighbor, maybe somebody you haven't seen in a while, and, uh, and extend a greeting to them. And as they do that, I'm going to invite the kids to make their way down and, uh, and for them to head out to Sunday school.
We're going to uh, sing again, and uh, the song that we're going to sing next is 878 in the songbook. The words will be on the screen. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the pleasures of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. And we'll sing all four verses straight through. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to invite you to turn to Acts chapter 4. And that passage, uh, that verse in Acts uh, 4, verse 32, that uh, I read for our call to worship is the, uh, the first verse of our scripture reading for today as we continue in our, um, our series through the book of Acts. And we're going to be reading verse, uh, Acts 4, 32 through to chapter 5, verse 11. Words will be on the screen if, uh, if you haven't got a Bible, but... It's always good to know where to find these things so you can look it up when you're at home. Acts 4, chapter 32. All of the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full acknowledgement, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. 
Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. And then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we uh, often find passages like this in Scripture that are obscure and strange and awkward and heavy, and uh, sometimes we gloss over them. We don't preach them. We don't uh, spend a lot of time in them. And uh, today, this passage is the basis of the message that Leanne will be bringing uh, in a moment as we consider our hearts and what it means to have a heart of difference Uh, In preparation for the message, we're going to sing together uh, another hymn, number 573 in the songbook, and the words will be on the screen. And the song is, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Be Thou my best thought in day and in night, waking and sleeping, Thy presence my light. And as uh, as we move into the portion of our service where we listen for God to speak through his word. My prayer for each of us is that our hearts would be open to see the vision that God would have for us this morning as his servant brings the word. It's 573 in the songbook. Uh, I think it's the alternate version. There are two versions, so we'll uh, we'll have that in front of us as we uh, sing um, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
everybody. This morning I want to begin with some wisdom that's probably a bit heavy, but extremely pertinent to today's message. And what I'm about to say is nothing new to us. It won't be astonishing. It won't be anything we haven't heard before. But what is important is that even though we know it to be true, we find it extremely difficult to live out. And here it is. In the bustling chaos of our modern world, it seems as though self-centeredness has become a prevailing characteristic of society. We are bombarded with messages that emphasize personal success, material accumulation, individual happiness, and that these are the ultimate goals of life. However, in the midst of all this clamor, one of my favorite authors and spiritual leaders, Anthony DeMello, would remind us that true fulfillment lies in embracing a path that runs contrary to those values. DeMello would invite us to step back and question the very nature of our existence. He would highlight that the constant pursuit of self-interest will often leave us feeling empty and disconnected from the world around us. Instead, DeMello would urge us to shift our focus outward, to recognize the inherent interconnectedness of all beings by actively engaging in acts of compassion and selfless service, we transcend that superficiality of personal gain and tap into this deeper wellspring of, of fulfillment, which is something we are longing for, that we crave this deeper fulfillment. DeMello's teachings are directly derived from scripture that we read this morning. In a world that may try to convince us otherwise, Scripture's wisdom serves us a gentle reminder that our ultimate purpose lies in not what we accumulate for ourselves, but in how we contribute to the well-being of others. By stepping outside of the boundaries of self-centeredness, we rediscover this profound joy and meaning and that comes from acts of kindness, and empathy and genuine care for fellow human beings. When you are not finding fulfillment and joy by chasing down your dreams, it's possible that it's because the real truth is finding that fulfillment is in giving kindness and care to others. In today's scripture reading that Peter read for us earlier, we see this powerful contrast between two very different expressions of faith. On one hand, we have Barnabas, who embodies the freedom and joy that comes from a deep and abiding faith in Christ. And on the other hand, we have Ananias and Sapphira, who try to fake it on the outside, but their hearts aren't really in it. As we delve deeper into this passage, we must recognize that it's not primarily about discipline or how we act. Instead, it's about the condition of our hearts, of who we truly are when nobody is watching. It's about the call to genuine and authentic faith, which requires honesty and vulnerability before God, which isn't always easy. So let us begin by examining Barnabas who we are introduced to in Acts chapter 4. And Luke tells us that his name means son of encouragement, and this is exactly who he is and what he embodies. Barnabas was a man who truly experienced the freedom and joy that comes from a deep and abiding faith in Christ. He was willing to sell his possessions and give the money to the apostles to support the needs of the community. He was not concerned about his own needs or wants, but was focused on serving others and living out of faith in a tangible way. I just want to pause here for a second, because people will often use this passage to argue that the church only cares about money, 
and that every time the church is involved, it's asking for money. And that's not it. Yes, in Scripture, it talks about money. Absolutely, it does. And it brings up, and I think it's because humans have such a complex relationship with money. The world says we are to desire it, that it brings happiness. We are to hoard it, that we should want it more than almost anything else because it can give us what we need. But yet, as Jesus followers, we are called to a different kind of relationship with money, a relationship where it doesn't control us, where we are not selfish with it, where we are free from its pull and its control. Scripture brings it up so much because we crave it so much, and it's a constant reminder, and we are people who need constant reminding of how to approach money. But anyways, back to Barnabas. He's an example of what it means to truly follow Jesus and to live out our faith in practical ways. He, is, he shows us this genuine faith that it's not just a matter of belief, but it is expressed in our actions and attitudes towards others. It's not just about a belief system. It's how we live it out. So which is a great question we can ask ourselves. Does what we believe translate into how we behave? Or even conversely, reflect on how you behaved in a certain situation, and does it truly reflect what you say you believe? That's a great reflection exercise for ju uh, during the week or any time you're doing our devotions. When we put others' needs in a healthy way before our own, we demonstrate the love and the compassion of Christ in the world around us. However, the contrast between Barnabas and Ananias and Sapphira is stark. In Acts 5, we read about their attempt to deceive the community by pretending to give the full price of their land while secretly keeping back some of the proceeds. Their actions were not only dishonest, but also revealed a lack of faith in God's provision and his sovereignty. Ananias and Sapphira's sin, it wasn't about holding the money back. That wasn't the issue. Instead, their sin was in pretending to be something they were not. They wanted to appear generous. They wanted to appear selfless. But their hearts were not truly aligned with that. I often wonder, would the outcome have been the same if they were simply honest? If they simply said, we gave this much, this is how much we sold it for, and this is why we're not giving all of it. Would that have changed the outcome? I don't know. They were more concerned with their reputation and their status in the community than with then living a true, genuine, authentic faith. As we reflect on these two examples of faith, we are challenged to examine our own hearts and our own motivations. Do we really trust God in all situations? Do we trust in God's provision and sovereignty? Or are there times that we manipulate our circumstances to ensure that our own reputation or our own success is shored up for us? Are we willing to be vulnerable and honest about our struggles and our weaknesses? Or do we feel the need to put up a facade of perfection and strength? Christ calls us to a deep and abiding faith that is rooted in trust and surrender to his will, things that don't always come easily to us. This faith requires honesty and vulnerability before God and others, where we need to acknowledge our weaknesses and our need for his grace and his mercy. 
It calls us to put other needs before our own, to serve and love them as Christ did, and to trust in God's provision and his sovereignty in all circumstances. Following Jesus is not for the faint of heart. It is a life of reflection, a life of willingness to see and to correct our flaws. And that's not something we do easily, but it is something that is absolutely needed for spiritual and emotional maturity. As we respond to the message today, let us take a moment to reflect on the condition of our hearts. We are so busy in our world, we often don't take time to sit with ourselves and allow God to search our hearts. Let us ask God to reveal any areas where we are holding back and not fully trusting in him. And that can be a scary prayer. But trust me, it is always for our benefit. God never does anything cruelly. He will answer that prayer in the most gentle of ways. He is our biggest cheerleader. Let us also ask him to give us the courage and the strength to live out a genuine and authentic faith that reflects his love and his compassion to the world around us. May the Holy Spirit guide and empower us to live out this call to this deep, deep faith. And may we, like Barnabas, be known for our generosity, our encouragement, and our willingness to serve others. May we, like Barnabas, be willing to give sacrificially of our time, our resources, our talents, to build up the kingdom of God and to bring hope and healing to a world that we know is broken and hurting. But may we also learn from Ananias and Sapphira and avoid the temptation to put up this facade of perfection and of strength or to manipulate circumstances to ensure our own success, our own status. Let us instead embrace our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, trusting that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. As Christians, we espouse to that. We say that. We believe that. Does our behavior reflect that? God is able to use even our failures, even our shortcomings, for his glory and our good. As I ask the worship team to come up and prepare us for moments of reflection, I want to conclude by, by saying, just may we pay attention to Christ's call to a deep and abiding faith, a faith that is rooted in trust, and surrender and obedience, things that do not come easily to us. May we be known not only for what we say we believe, but how we live out our faith in practical ways, serving and loving others as Christ did. And may we always be willing to examine our hearts and our motivations, seeking to align them with God's purposes and trusting his provision and sovereignty. What would it feel like if you knew, you knew without a shadow of a doubt that you were a part of a movement that brought hope and healing and transformation to Guelph? That's something we all want. But that is not the sole responsibility of the officers, of the mission board, of the senior pastoral care. That is the responsibility of everybody's who is sitting here this morning. Everybody who calls the Salvation Army Guelph Citadel their home church. None of us gets to come here on a Sunday morning and just sit and leave and do nothing. None of us get to leave without investing in this community if our goal is being a church that offers hope, healing, and transformation. We all have a vital role to play May we all embrace God's grace and mercy as we reflect 
where we are acting like Barnabas and where we are acting like Ananias and Sapphira. May we remember true fulfillment does not come from selfishness, but in serving others. And may this be our prayer. May God bless us and guide us as we seek to live out this call to deep and abiding faith. And may he use us to bring hope and healing and transformation to our world. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let call us to be people of faith, yet we are often people with doubts. We doubt that love can grow again in relationships where anger and bitterness reign supreme. But you know the strength of love, so help us to be faithful lovers. We doubt that peace can come where hatred and racism reign supreme, but you know the power of peace. Help us to be faithful peacemakers. We doubt that the hungry can be fed, where despair and hopelessness reign supreme. But you know that there is enough food in the world, so help us to be generous 
and faithful givers. You specialize in impossibilities. You walked on water, you heal the nations, you forgive sins, you set the captive free, you set us free from our captivities. This morning we pray for people here who are filled with doubts, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening to our prayers, who wonder what this whole community is about. We pray for people who doubt the purpose of life, who wonder whether to end it all, who face feelings of meaninglessness and despair. Even when we have that sinking feeling, give us the wisdom to turn to you. Lord, we want to believe. Help our unbelief. Give us faith, small as a mustard seed, so that we can be your faithful people, believing in your power to save, believing in your power to reign supreme, believing that we can share this good news with everyone we meet. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we uh, sing our closing song, our sending song, and it's a, a cry that the Lord would reign supreme in our lives over all of the earth that he has created, and that we would be a part of that as we take that faith into the world that he would reign in and through us. We'll sing this, and then, uh, and then I'll declare a benediction. Friends, as you go, you'll have the opportunity to give at our giving stations that are located just beyond the, uh, the sanctuary doors. Uh, but look around you, dear people. Look at each other. Take a look at one another. It's not, it's not rhetorical. Do it. Take a look at each other. God's joy is poured out on you and for you so that you might be a blessing to others. God will continually walk and work with you, relieving your burdens and giving you strength. So go in faith, into God's world, rejoicing. Amen.